so I am now in battle zone and it has a representation of my controller in the game matching the controller in real life the tracking is pretty good the size of it is pretty good obviously my hands are invisible my arms are invisible but I am inside this cockpit and we're getting ready to start the game and I'm supposed to hold options to center my view. Insert combat operative identification nexus. And so this is the main menu of Battlezone and I'm going to go ahead and play offline. I do not have PlayStation Plus and I don't really care about online gaming that much to be totally honest with you. Um... I'm going to go ahead and skip the intro, and I'm just going to create a new game. And yes, I will overwrite the campaign. Okay, so you do have three options for your tank. You have heavy tank, you have medium tank, and you have light tank. And basically, the armor of heavy tank, of course, is the best. The armor of the light tank is absolutely the worst. The firepower for heavy tank is the best. But the light tank, of course, is incredibly fast and then the medium tank is supposed to be kind of like in between right i go with the light tank because i like the ability to move incredibly quickly okay i need to deploy my tank and i'm ready to go fight your way to the enemy base and destroy it Okay, so it appears that I'm in a snowy type outdoor environment. The graphics of this game are both really good and also a little bit mediocre. Um, at times the graphics really truly impress me and blow me away. And then at other times I look at the graphics and I'm like, you know, this is kind of lame. It should be even better than this. Uh, the blue guys are on my side, the red guys are the enemies, and one thing you learn very quickly in playing Battlezone is that you have to lead your shots. You do not want to typically aim right at the target. You want to aim a little bit ahead of the target, a little bit behind the target. You have to uh, lead your, your shots because otherwise it's just not going to work. Damage. And your missiles, your weapons have to reload. Uh, now I got some, uh, some incoming enemies are going to try to get me from screwing up their base. But I'm going to try to jack their base up as much as I can before they start screwing with me. Uh, here's an enemy right here. Took him out nice and easy. Okay, so we probably have some aerial enemies coming. Yeah, we got a hunter killer. These guys remind me of hunter killers from uh, Terminator. These helicopter guys. But I do have some... Uh... Oh, my ammunition is out, so I gotta switch to a different... A different weapon. This is my machine guns. So I can use my machine guns to go after. And let's go ahead and attack this this base. Just keep blasting, just keep blasting. There is a reload time, so you have to Pay attention to how you're using your weapons because you are going to have periods of time where you're not going to be able to shoot because it's it's recharging your weapon. But this is the very beginning of the game, so obviously that was super easy. This is the map that you get, and you can 
kind of choose where you want your tank to go. You can buy new lives. Um, there's the bad guys and they start approaching you. And then when, when you're connecting to the bad guy, it's like a really, really big battle. Um, it's not much of a real single player game. The enemy's static defenses. There's not much of a single player campaign really. You're just kind of doing these various little missions. It's not terrible. Um, it's not terrible, but it's it's not exactly. Um, I mean, there's not much of a story element. And I, if there's anything I wish this game had was um, if they could maybe enhance the single player part of this game a little bit more. So the way I play offense and defense is I basically just, I use the speed of um, the light tank. I use the speed to try to basically dodge enemy fire. Oh shit, I'm shooting my own tank. The blue guys are on my side. Armor group identified. The blue guys are on my side. I should not kill my own peeps. So the world that I'm in does have kind of a Tronish look to it, which is is always kind of awesome. So many of these early VR games do kind of have a Tron a Tron vibe to them, especially on like uh, HTC Vive. There's a lot of games that kind of have a Tron type look. So that was a pretty easy level. And we get to our map again. And you get these really 3D fireworks. And then I'm gonna move here and we'll see what the next level looks like. Enigma, you find a piece of twisted wreckage of a type that is unfamiliar to you, investigate. You trigger an old recording, but you only manage to hear the first is a triangle before the wreckage explodes, damaging your hull. That's great. Okay, so we're going to move here. The enemy power is... I've reached a supply point, so I guess I could buy some weapons. Um... I'm not going to buy anything right now, though. I'm going to save my money. I kind of like the standard weapons that you operate with, but if I end up having a lot of... You, you also can use your money to buy an extra life. So sometimes you want to save your money. Protect the allied base from the enemy attackers. The radar that you have right in front of you is incredibly useful in the game. First of all, they give you this cockpit with windows all over the place and this tank all around me. I'm in this huge tank. And the nice thing about having all these windows in this large cockpit is it gives you a sense of space, of being somewhere inside a tank. And so the motion sickness isn't really a problem because you feel like you're in a cockpit. I'm taking some serious damage from this tank right here. Uh, whoops. My base is taking some damage, so I need to get back here over by my base and try to take care of these, these guys that are screwing around with my base. Is there anybody else over here? So I do have this radar, which kind of keeps track of enemies as well. This is one of these UFO enemies. You have to lead your shots in this game. You definitely don't want to be shooting behind where your enemy is heading. You can't really shoot like right at your enemy. Look at the train that's up there. That's pretty cool. They also have things that are flying around like in this 
Tron-like city that you're inhabiting. And every time you explode anything, you want to collect every little goodie that comes out of it after it explodes. You have to let your weapons uh, reload, and so you have to kind of know how many shots you can get off before you're going to have to do a reload. Like this helicopter type enemy that I'm going after right now, I have to kind of lead it with my shots. Um, so I survived wave one, and now it's going to begin wave two. And basically, I just need to pretty much defend my um, my base, I suppose. I don't know if I have to attack their base. Let's see, I'm going to head out this way. And I got a tank that's firing. He's trying to get in near my base. I did an interception, which means like a tank will shoot a missile at you. You can actually intercept that missile in midair and get an interception. Commencing. Uh, they could be getting a little too close to my base. I gotta lead my shots when I'm shooting this tank over here. Ah, oh, damn it. Got hit. Um, your meter is actually right here in your cockpit. If you see these little green markers, it shows how much of, uh, how my, um, shields are doing, how much shield power I still have. So I was able to take out another wave. And now we're looking at wave three. Like I got some helicopter enemies approaching. You can try to shoot from hella far, but you have to try to predict um, just how high your missile is going to go. Like I'm not doing a good job at all trying to hit this. Oh damn it! I'm gonna have to try to take this tank out first. I'm letting my base take a lot of damage. I'm putting myself in danger as well. Where is this helicopter enemy? Ah, here we go. I got two of them. Normally, they don't stay stationary like that and allow you to shoot them easily. Usually, the helicopters are moving all over the damn place. Usually, it's very hard to take those helicopter guys out. Okay, so let's do one more level. We'll do one more level and then we'll go ahead and call this, call this a play session, but let's just do one more enemies. Let's do one more enemy encounter and kind of check it out. See if we can get a new level, a different looking level, or a different kind of objective. Hack the enemy base, but block them from hacking your... This is cool how it's all dark and black. I wish the base actually looked like this. But this blue looks really cool. This looks good. One thing I'll also say too is PlayStation 4 Pro, this game does look better on PlayStation 4 Pro. There is an improvement. I had a regular PlayStation when I first started playing this game and I got the PS4 Pro and this was one of the very first games I tried on PS4 Pro and there definitely is an improvement. It's not a giant improvement though. It's not like a huge night and day kind of improvement. Really what is improved is see this, this cannon structure, like I'm moving this up and down, if you can see that. That looks a lot sharper, a lot cleaner. And then sometimes the objects in the distance are just a little bit more refined. Um, I need to go hack this base and stop them from hacking my base and I'm not doing a good job at all here. But yeah, the colors of the game are pretty, it's pretty bright and colorful. Um, it can look, look a little bit washed out. 
but it's pretty damn colorful. It's pretty Tron-like with its appearance, and um, I think it's I think it's pretty cool. But I, I do wonder if they if they make a Battle Zone two, and if the Battle Zone two is um, designed a little bit more with the PlayStation Four Pro in mind in terms of taking better advantage of it. I don't know that this original game, this original battle zone. I don't know that the. Oh, I got destroyed. My tank got taken out. Let me go ahead and respawn. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, oh man, I failed. Three, two, one. Failure. Okay, I'm going to try moving to a completely different location. Okay, so this will definitely be the last the last um, mission I do for this Let's Play, but I wanted to try to give a look at some of the different levels that are available in this game, kind of the different looks of the different levels. Some levels it's like nighttime, some it's daytime, and so it can change the look of the level pretty cool. The music does seem to repeat a lot. I like the music. I really like the music, but it does repeat a little too much. Like this main song that's playing right now, you'll hear this song over and over again. Of course, I am playing the early part of this game, this campaign, so maybe if you get a little bit further along, the, uh, the music might change up quite a bit more. So that was the first wave. This is probably one of the um, closest to being like a AAA game on PS PSVR. I mean, obviously we have Re Resident Evil 7 now and Dirt Rally VR that everybody's into right now, but Battlezone as a launch game, this game was $59.99, I think, right? Um, I'm not sure that this game is really worth like $59.99 unless you really get into the online co-op play. But if you're just playing the campaign like I am, I don't think this really is worth $60. Um, but this has been on sale a number of times, I believe. This has been on sale. You could get this, I think, for like $30. 35 bucks because I have a Gamefly subscription I've kind of just decided to whenever I want to play Battlezone I'll just get it from Gamefly and um, but if I saw it you know if I saw this on sale for 20 bucks where it was kind of like a blowout sale I'd absolutely pick it up no question about it And if you see it for 30, it's absolutely worth buying for 30. Especially if you like the, uh, if you like multiplayer. All right, well, that's the end of this little stage here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that will be the end of this play session. Once again, this has been Anthony from VR Roundtable and I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy, later.